Welcome back to the Rock Coder Space Invaders tutorial. In this session, we're going to make it so that as we destroy Space Invaders, they get faster and faster. So the less Space Invaders remaining, the faster they move. We're also going to make it so that progressive waves of invaders get faster, so the second wave will be faster than the first wave and so on. And we're going to add defensive shields between the player and the invaders. It's a lot to get on with, so let's go. Start in the invader sprite. When we're initialising, we actually set speed that they're going to move to 40. The slower that value, the quicker they move. Okay. What I'm going to do is set up a few new variables, constant variables like all invader count. I'm going to set, I'm going to set a variable called start speed constant for all sprites. That I'm going to set as 40. That's what the first wave of it, the speed of the first wave of aliens invaders is going to be. So the first wave come in at same as they currently do, start speed of 40. Now every time I hit an invader I want the speed up slightly. So I'm going to set another constant variable I'm going to call this speed change per invader. Nice and catchy. Speed change change per invader. Every time I hit an invader, it's constant. It's for all sprites. Every time I hit an invader, it's going. They're going to speed up by this value. So I'll set speed change per invader. I'm going to set it to minus 0 0.6. So it's going to be a slight increase in speed every time an invader is destroyed. And instead of setting my start speed at the bottom of create invaders, I'm going to change how this works slightly. I'm going to set a new variable called start speed, just for this sprite. When I start a game, initialize a game, I'm going to insert, I'm going to set start speed to the constant value of start speed. The reason I've done these constants, it makes them easy to change, it makes the code easy to read. So at the beginning of the game I'll set the start, start speed to start speed constant. And when I create the invaders, what I'm going to do here is set the speed to the start speed. So in effect that is still setting speed to 40. But the difference here is that after I've done that I'm going to change the value of start speed. So I will change start speed by let's set up another constant value and we'll call this speed change per wave. So speed change per wave. So every time I get through a wave I want the next wave of aliens to be slightly faster, not ridiculously faster but slightly faster. So I will set speed change per wave to minus two. Um, they get faster. The first wave starts at 40, the next wave will start at 38 and so on and so forth. So back over to create invaders. Set the speed to start speed, I've changed the start speed by change speed per wave. So that gets each progressive wave starting slightly faster. Now over here in my collision check, if I've hit an invader, then I remove the missile, but I can also speed up the remaining invaders if I change speed by speed change per invader. So I'll simply add that in there. I do want to make a check to make sure that speed hasn't gone less than zero, because that wouldn't work very well. So if Speed is less than zero. I 
then we'll just set speed to zero. So we'll lock it so it can't go less than zero. And we'll put that in there. Okay. So now we have invaders that speed up the more invaders you shoot and also speed up the more waves that you get through. So I'll hide those variables. And let's see if that works. Go to large screen and let's play that. Hit space. And they're moving quite slowly. The more I hit, the faster they should travel. I think they're speeding up. Yeah, they're definitely getting faster. Oh, I'm seeing somebody dropping a bomb where there's no alien. Better have a look into that. But the, the, they're getting faster, and that's great. So let's have a look why he's dropping a bomb in the middle of nowhere. The reason that the bomb came from nowhere, if I look in this bomb sprite, when I start as a clone, I'm not actually setting the position of the sprite. Should be due to X, Y. That was well spotted. So now it should create bombs from the correct places. Yeah, we're getting much more variety now. That's great. So it's now dropping bombs, the invaders are getting quicker. Now I want to add the shields. So I'll go into my shield sprite. This only has one costume in here. Just one costume. And it's not exactly white. All the sprites are white except this one, which is slightly off-white, which will be explained shortly. Right, the way these shields are going to work is I'm going to draw them with pen because these shields have to deteriorate slowly as they're getting hit by bombs and missiles. We can't do that using normal sprites. So I'm going to make a custom block. I'm going to call it initialize shields. And I'm going to make it run without screen refresh. I'm going to position this for the left hand shield, which is at minus 162. Come on, minus one, one, two. And I'm going to have four shields. So repeat. Four times. And here, I need to hit this icon down here as I want to add the use of pen blocks. So I want to stamp the sprite to the screen. So it's actually drawing it as opposed to using a sprite. And then move the X coordinate so that it's ready for the next base. So move it over to 108. If I hit that, see four bases appear on the screen. If I want to remove them, I can use an interesting technique. I can change the colour of these to black and draw them on top. So when I initialize the game, I'm going to set the brightness to minus 100, which effectively makes it black. And I'm going to call the initialize shields block. That will draw black shields, completely removing them from the screen. I'm going to add another receiver. When I receive and this is a new function called initialize shields. And when I receive that, I'll set the brightness to zero, which is default, and then draw them. So if I initialize shields, I draw them. If I initialize game, I remove them. Now we re re renew the shields every time there's a new wave of invaders. 
So every time you've destroyed every invader or at the beginning of the first wave, you've got brand new shields. So we'll go into the invader sprite and we'll go to the create invaders block. So when, whenever we create a new wave of invaders, we're going to broadcast initialize shields. So when I now start a game, I've got some shields that serve no purpose whatsoever. I can fire through them and the bombs can pass through them. So the next step is to make it so that they actually block the bombs and the shields. I'll start with the missiles. And I'll so I'll go into the missile sprite and I'm going to add a receiver when I receive check collisions. Now I'm going to use the colour checking block if the sensing block, if I'm touching a colour, click on the colour, select the little icon there and go over this because don't forget, I, I did mention these shields are a slightly different colour to everything else. So if I'm touching that colour, I'm definitely touching a shield. So if I'm touching that, then I'm going to switch my costume to shield splat. So let's switch costume to shield splat. And I'm going to actually stamp that so it will remove part of the shield. And then I'm no longer firing because the missile has been used, so I'll set play firing to false and I'll hide the missile. So now I can fire missiles through the shield. I want something similar to be done with bombs. So I go to the bomb sprite. And I will add the check collision in there as well. So event when I receive check collision again if I'm touching that colour if sensing block touching it has to be that exact colour so click on the icon click on the base if I'm touching that colour then again this bomb sprite it's got a shield splat sprite in there so if I'm touching that colour I'm going to change to the shield splat I'm going to stamp it and then I'm going to delete the bomb so I'll delete the clone and one other thing I need to do here I only want to check collisions for clones I don't want to check for the master so I better add a quick check in there if I copy this across if the clone type is a bomb and we'll check collisions now if I run the code I should have shields that can be shot and bombed yeah I can fire through the shield and the bombs are making nice holes in them so they are providing defense and this is looking like a full game of Space Invaders now. In the next episode, we'll add, we'll add animation to the Space Invaders.